What is prayer? Prayer is communication with our Creator. Think about this. Everybody today has a cell phone. You look at all the children, they're playing on their, their cell phones. They're on their iPads. They're on all their little tablets. Every child today is connected to social media. But think about the phones. Whenever you call somebody, do you call somebody and just talk and then hang up? What if somebody called you on the phone and just started talking for half an hour and they just hung up the phone on you? Would you be happy? Don't you want to talk back and have a conversation? Don't you want to share how you feel? Don't you want to share, you know, your, your concerns? A lot of times we just talk to God and hang up the phone. It's just one way conversation. We need to get to the point where sometimes we will just get on our knees and say, God, what do you want to tell me? God, what do you want me to change? God, what do you want me to do for you? Sometimes just go before God and don't even ask for anything. And say, God, I just want to worship you. I just want to tell you I love you. God does love our affection. But you can tell who is really praying by their connection with God. If you just say, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That's not praying. That's just repeating a, a ritual. Get to the point where you can go before God and you can be open to him and say, God, I don't even know you, but I want to know you. God, I want to just fall in love with you. I want to get, I want to know what you love. I want to know what you hate. God, I want you to speak with me. I want you to tell me what to do. You see, in the beginning, God spoke openly to man. God spoke to our father, Adam, in the garden. He told him, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. That's what God said to our father, Adam. But there was another spirit that wanted to try to confuse him. God said, don't eat of that tree that is of the knowledge of good and evil. If I told you this tree had bad fruit and I said, don't eat of it because it's poisonous, would you eat of it? Somebody would. Somebody would get curious and say, you know what? That looks yummy. That looks delicious. That's what the devil wants to try to do to us. The devil wants to fool us to disobey God. But we need to get to the point where we can actually hear from God again. You know why a lot of people today can't hear from God? Because sin has closed our ears. You know that when Adam sinned against God, he still heard the literal voice of God. God told Adam, he said, where are you? And Adam said, I hid myself because I heard you and I was afraid. And so I hid myself. A lot of people don't want to pray because they're afraid of judgment. But if you just go to God, God is merciful. God is forgiving. God is patient. You can go to God and tell him all, all your secrets and he will listen to you. Whatever you struggle with, all you got to do is say, God, look, I'm struggling with this and I need help. Many people today, they don't know how to get out of sin. Think about your children. If your children were tangled up in wires and they said, I need help, would you try to help them? You would do whatever you got to do to try to help them. You wouldn't say, oh, you got tied up in there. That's your fault. If we would do this for our children, how much more God? God sees us tangled up in so many things, 
But all we need to do is say, God, I need your help. God, I need you to save me. If you got an addiction, you could say, God, I need you to help me to stop. I used to be addicted to smoking. Little children, don't give in to peer pressure. When other children try to tell you to smoke, don't give in to that. Because that is not what God wants you to do. Your body is supposed to be the temple of God. God created your body to do what is right. God did not create your body to try drugs. He didn't create your body to use it for evil. He created us to do good because we are supposed to be made in the likeness and image of God. Don't follow your best friends and try to give in to peer pressure. If they say, hey, smoke this cigarette, say, no, that's all right, I don't want it. Because I gave in to peer pressure and I was stuck in that addiction of smoking for many, many years to the point when I wanted to stop, I couldn't do it anymore because it was too hard for me. I was so addicted to smoking and drinking and getting drunk that I needed a savior. I said, God, I can't do this by myself. I want to stop, but I don't know how. The only way and the only one that can help you with your problems is God. People might give up on you and say, you know what, you're no good. No, God says, come to me. Come to me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your souls. God will not give up on you like man will. All you have to do is be honest and say, God, look, I need your help. That's what repentance is all about, saying, God, I need your help. If you like to tell lies, Tell God, I need help to stop lying. How many people know people that are complainers? You hear people when they start complaining, they keep complaining, they can't stop, right? And then every time you say, man, this is a beautiful day, you know what they say? What's beautiful about it? Sometimes when people start to complain, it's so hard to stop because it's an addiction. And you start saying, you know what? How's life treating you? People say, man, life's treating me like trash. You know what Jesus said? I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you know what your life is, your life is supposed to be the Lord Jesus Christ. So when people say, how's life treating you? You know, I say, perfect. Life is treating me good because Jesus said he is the life. Jesus has never done anything wrong. See, I'm gonna tell you today, many people say they don't believe in God and it's not because God did anything wrong. It's because they've seen a lot of hypocrisy in people that claim that they serve God. But God has never done anything wrong. God has never failed. The Bible says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You see that he's there for you. Whatever problems you might have, whatever things that you struggle with, God is always there to lend a hand. He says, my hand is not short, too short that I cannot save. God is always there reaching. He's always waiting for us to run to him. You see, today, a lot of us are so critical when people do things wrong. How many people have children? Do you want your children to be afraid when they do something wrong and say, oh no, mom and dad is gonna try to kill me? We don't want them to do that. We want them to trust us so much when they do something wrong, say, you know what? I'm going straight to dad. I'm gonna go straight to mom. And I'm gonna say, mom, dad, help me because I messed up. Our children are going to mess up, but we need to be there for them and say, you know what? I'm here to help you. God is greater than us. 